Hey friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day two in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're gonna show you how to go from feeling like a beginner in Logic Pro to that of an expert. So you can get right down to creating in this amazing application. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to download and manage the sound library content that comes with Logic Pro because there is a wealth of instruments, sound samples, loops that you can use for your own productions. At the moment, we have an empty project in front of us, but as you start to dig into Logic Pro recording, whether it be audio or software instruments in MIDI, you may start to realize there's a lot more to Logic Pro than you originally thought. For example, if we go right up here to this button in the upper left-hand corner, looks like a filing cabinet drawer, if we click on it, it brings up the library on the left-hand side of the application. The library allows you to pick through different preset sounds or patches depending on the track type you're working with. At the moment, we have an empty audio track, so the different patches and presets that are available to us are specific to audio track types. We'll dig into what presets and patches actually are, but just know they're preset sounds or channel strips that you can load onto a track. So if we take a look, we have things like drums and percussion, we have voice, which I think a lot of folks will probably be pretty interested in. We have performance patches, studio instruments, acoustic guitar, effects, electric guitar and bass, and experimental. And as you may start to notice, we have these different arrow icons next to certain presets and patches, much like the arrows that we saw with the starter grids when we were loading a brand new project. These arrows are letting us know that there are sounds, there are channel strip settings, there are preset patches that are available for us to use, but we have to download them first. The same thing goes if we go to the Apple Loops browser, which is in the upper right-hand corner here. And we have the circle that looks like a loop. And if we click on it, Logic is gonna take a second to index all the Apple Loops that are available to us in this current version of Logic Pro. And as you can see, there are a lot of items that we can use. Right down here, it says we have about 14,000 Apple Loops that we could use for our projects. Apple Loops are pre-recorded loops or samples that you can load into your projects. They're royalty-free. You can use them as you see fit, whether it be to chop up and sample or use as is. But just about all the Apple Loops in the browser here are grayed out and they have this arrow again. We can use these Apple Loops. We just have to download them first. If you remember from the last video, Logic Pro actually tried to download some of the essential sounds that it recommends that we load at a bare minimum but I chose to cancel that download so I could show you how to download and manage the sound library content in today's video. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and close the Apple Loops browser. I'm gonna close the library. Let's go up to Logic Pro in the top menu bar, go down to sound library, and right out of the gate, there's a couple different options that we can choose with managing the sound library content. First, we can quickly ask Logic to download the essential sounds. So this is the bare minimum recommended sound content that you should download when you open Logic Pro for the first time. This will give you a lot to get going with Logic Pro, but without taking up a huge amount of space on your Mac's hard drive. Or we can choose to have Logic just download all the available sounds right now. We can also have Logic reinstall the sound library, which can be helpful if number one, you wanna make sure you have the latest version of all the available content, or number two, you installed the sound library on an external drive and you don't have it available. So you need to re-download the library. Here's the option to open the sound library manager where you can actually pick and choose which sounds and content you want to install on your Mac. Or we can choose to relocate the sound library. Let's go ahead and open the sound library manager. Cool, let's expand the view of this window by clicking and holding on the bottom right-hand corner and dragging out. And we can see that already there's a significant amount of categories of content that we can download. There's the essential sounds and instruments for Logic Pro main stage, which is currently incomplete. So this content was not completely downloaded to my Mac. We also have legacy and compatibility content right down here that's also incomplete. And as you saw, I clicked on the arrow on the left-hand side of this category which expands the view further. So there's a lot of content just within the legacy and compatibility options. We can take a look at sound packs, which there are plenty. There are producer packs, which provides you with preset sounds and starter grids and loops and samples that you can use for your own projects, which were created by some of the top producers in the industry today. There's the Alchemy Sound Libraries, which is for the Alchemy powerhouse synth that comes with Logic Pro. It is amazing. And there's a lot to dig into there too. And there's much more beyond that, such as bass, cinematic sounds, drum kit sounds, electronic drum kit, guitar, mallet, orchestral, world instruments, and so much more. So you can see there's a lot going on in here. 
And you can actually choose to select just specific sounds to download and install to your Mac, whether it be from the Sound Library Manager as a category of sounds, or you can choose to download just select sounds inside the library just by clicking. Awesome, so that specific preset patch has been downloaded. Or we can go to the Apple Loops browser and download a specific Apple Loop. Awesome. Or we can download the entire library of content. So if we choose to select all the uninstalled sounds, we have about 52 gigs of sounds to download and the installation requires 75 gigs in total. As you're probably noticing, there's a ton of sounds that come with Logic Pro. Since we've selected all of the uninstalled content, all we have to do is now click on install to install this entire library to the Mac. Or again, we can do this piecemeal. So I'll do that right now with the Alpha Waves content here. Let's install. Just so we can see right up here in the LCD in the control bar is a blue bar. This will show us a progress bar for any downloading content. However, while it's very exciting that Logic has so much content to offer you, Perhaps you personally would prefer not to install the entire library onto your Mac's internal drive, but rather onto an external drive. Well, let's go back up to Logic Pro. Let's go down to Sound Library and go down to Relocate Sound Library. Now, when you relocate the Sound Library, all Sound Library content except for Apple Loops, Impulse Responses, Patches, Software Instrument Presets, and those plugin settings that are stored in the App Bundle are moved to the new location and user content is not affected. From here, we can choose to move the sound library content installed on the Mac to an external drive. At the moment, I have a USB hard drive connected to my Mac. It has about almost two terabytes of available space. So let's choose to move the existing installation of about 6.35 gigs to this external USB drive. So I'm gonna click on the drive and click to relocate. From there, you'll have to type in your user password to confirm you want to make this change. All right, the sound library has been successfully moved to this new home. Let's click OK. And let's go back up to Logic Pro, go down to Sound Library, and let's download some more sounds by opening the Sound Library Manager. Let's select another one of the sound packs here, and let's install it. We can see its progress right up here in the LCD, and this is for both downloading and installing. And if we open the Finder, navigate to my external drive, click on library, click on application support, and we can see that now both GarageBand and Logic Pro sounds have been installed on my external drive. And as we continue to download content, it will be installed not on the Mac's internal drive, but on this external USB drive. A couple of things to know when it comes to relocating the sound library content. First, I recommend that you don't change the name of the drive once you made this relocation. Otherwise, the Logic Pro main stage GarageBand will have a hard time finding it and you'll have to re-download the content. Second, you can't store the sound library on any sort of driver disk that is being used for time machine backups. And third, you can't share a sound library on an external drive between Mac computers. And lastly, if you want to relocate any of this content from your external drive to anywhere else, I highly recommend that you do this within Logic Pro itself and don't just start moving folders around. So let's go back to Logic Pro, go down to Sound Library, and let's relocate the Sound Library once more. And this time, because we're using that external USB drive, the next available drive to move this content to is the Mac's internal drive. So let's choose that and relocate once more. Cool, so we've covered a lot when it comes to all the different sound content that comes with Logic Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Logic Pro down Sound Library, and I'm going to download all the available sounds to my Mac and continue. In tomorrow's video, we're going to get you set up with your audio interface or USB microphone so you can get right down to laying down some creative ideas into an empty project. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow in the series of Newbie to Ninja. Take care.